Oh, yeah. It is 7 o'clock on Tuesday, April 23rd, 2024. This is a special council meeting for the city of Alburnett. We will go ahead and call this meeting to order. We will waive the Pledge of Allegiance and move on to roll call. Councilor Trum? Aye. Councilor Rosenberg? Aye. Councilor Suka? Aye. Councilor West? Present. Councilor Myers? Present. Let the record reflect we do have a quorum to conduct business tonight. Uh, with that, I would seek a motion to approve the agenda. So moved. Moved by Suka. Do I have a second? There's second by Bosenberg. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. The motion carries. This time <coughs> I'm going to hand it over to our legal counsel, Holly Corkery. Okay. Um, so we, uh, the first item on the agenda is the due process hearing or louder mill hearing, however you want to refer to it. Uh, for Mr. Shelby. So at this time, Mr. Shelby can present any uh, statements or arguments or evidence about the due process notice he received yesterday, um, or he can say nothing at all, or you can present arguments on his behalf, whatever you all prefer, and the council's here to listen. Fantastic. And what we'll do is I'll ask Mr. Shelby some questions here uh, is the easiest way to kind of go forward. Hi, council. My name is Lewis Field. My first time up here, so thank you for having me. I'm an attorney at Bradley and Riley down in Iowa City, uh, and I'm here today to assist Mr. Shelby with his due process hearing. Uh, just for the record, Mr. Shelby, could you state your full name and title? Yeah, it's uh, <clears throat> Christopher Michael Shelby. Um, full title is City Administrator Clerk. And how, and how long have you been the City Administrator Clerk? Uh, about a year and a half. year and a half. And prior to being City Administrator for Albernet, had you ever worked in a similar position before? No. So you're new to the city clerk, city administrator? Pretty much, yes. And in your role, what areas do you oversee? Um, well, I, I mean, I oversee the HR side, so payroll training, taking care of staff. Um, then I also do the treasurer part, where I'm maintaining the budgets, maintaining how much money's coming in and out, um, balance, checks and balances, doing checks and balances as far as checks are concerned. Um, making sure claims are paid, and then on the clerk side, I'm doing, um, you know, a, like preparing minutes. Um, we have to prepare for council packets. We have to prepare um, for agendas. We have to prepare for uh, business take place here at the city. Um, and then on top of that, I also work on the public work side, where I, um, you know, kind of diagnose and help repairs as they come along, whether it be the water repair or you know water treatment side, testing the water, handling lagoons, handling everyday failures, and then working with my staff that I've had for a very short amount of time right now. So, so and with that staff, how much staff do you have? I have one part-time deputy clerk, um, Hannah Pickett, and then I have um, Mac Clash is my um, uh, full-time city maintenance personnel. So it sounds like you're wearing a significant amount of hats in your role. Correct. Yeah, and one of them you mentioned specifically was uh, city treasurer. Can you just talk a little bit more about the specific duties there? Um, the fiduciary duty is to make sure, again, that I am looking for possible risks that can take place, um, uh, making sure that money is not being spent, you know, in the wrong places, making sure that um, that there's there's a check and balance, for example. You know, someone producing the claims, and then that same person, um, you know, not also approving the claims, and then that same person not also signing the checks. It's all split up so that, that there's a role for each one, so that that way we're covered, um, and we don't have to worry about you know, you know, putting risk out to the city. And you have in front of you a copy, and I do as well, and I, I believe all the counselors do of the notice of due process meeting, correct? Yes. And when did you receive this notice? Yes, morning at 8 o'clock. So just a little more than 24 hours ago? Yes. And were you placed on administrative leave at the same time? Immediately, yes. And as part of that, did they take away your access to your work computer, your work items? Yes. What all did they take from you? Um, uh, I was to hand over my credit card, my city phone, 
and my city keys. And then I received a text later that a sheriff was going to show up to my house to get my work computer because I just got back from a conference. I didn't even have time to drop the thing off. And um, also turn in my uh, well key for to do the, the water treatment and stuff like that. And the notice alleges eight items that uh, is characterized, and it says this is from uh, Mayor Sarazen, that have been characterized as misconduct, correct? Yeah, that's what I read. And the notice states that you'll have an opportunity to present any materials that you would like the City Council to consider. But at the same time you presented this notice, which mostly deals with work-related duties, you lost access to any of your work-related documents, correct? Correct. I have no way to produce anything. So you haven't been able to go through and look at emails, documents related to these projects, or anything else that no. you could present to, you know, help your case. No. Now, I'm going to walk with you through each of these allegations, and you can kind of talk about your side of the story. The first allegation here uh, <coughs> states that on or about April one of 2024, you failed to post statutorily required material to the city's social media. Uh, do you see that? Yes. And on the face of this, does this tell you what statutorily required material you failed to post? This doesn't, no. And was there any discussion about this when you received the notice, what was referred to here? There was no discussion about any of this. And it says that this conduct violates uh, City Policy 1301, a good conduct policy, and the requirements of the City Administrator job description. Uh, City Policy 1301, that's not an ordinance, correct? No, it would probably be a policy. And do you know who would have written that policy? Well, Mayor Sarazen would have written the policy. And with this, were you provided a copy of the good conduct policy? No. And were you told what was contained in the good conduct policy that you specifically violated under this allegation? No. Is your understanding that the policy requires perfection in the duties that you do? Uh, I hope not. I don't know anybody that's perfect. Was the council provided a copy of the uh, the good conduct policy that we're reviewing here? We're not. You're, you're not. This isn't your time to ask the council questions. Oh, I apologize. I was just trying to make sure if the if the claims here are that he violated a specific policy, I was just making sure that the council had it so they could review whether his conduct reached the level of the policy. The council has the employee handbook, which is where the policy is contained. Okay. Yep. Sorry, I'm just trying to make sure that he's able to put on a full defense and understands what everyone's looking at since he didn't receive a copy. <clears throat> well, I will say that I do take issue with these insinuations because no one asked. You never asked for these policies. No one's asked for the city administrator job description, and they're all public records. We would have produced any of this stuff. Well, Was it on a public record you can't I would just say that since my client was provided this notice yesterday morning, he was able to contact me later yesterday afternoon. We haven't had time to go through that whole process before this hearing. Yeah, well, you and I spoke on the phone, and you definitely could have asked. And we would have produced them as public record. Okay, I apologize. I should have done that. I was looking through this, you know, working under a time crunch. So I was just asking if the council had it. I won't direct any further questions to the council. Now, was this a... Uh, what notice do you believe that this is referring to uh, that you failed to potentially post? Um, this particular one is April 1st. Oh, this was the um, proposed FY25 city budget. And was this your first time completing the budget by yourself? Yes. Were you... Uh, and with what did were you aware that the budget where the budget need to be posted? I knew that it needed to be for sure budget posted in all three designated areas that are designated by resolution by the council. I knew that it needed to be put in the paper, um, and I knew that um, you know there that, that's basically the, the main areas that I knew it had to be put in, and then uh, they were learning social media. Yes, is definitely one spot. And uh, you weren't aware at the time that there's a Facebook requirement for posting. I, like I said, I, I, I didn't, no, I wasn't fully aware. I, I basically, you know, didn't read that. <laughs> yeah. And are cities required to have a Facebook? No. So it's only cities that have Facebook that would be required to post this on there? The way I understand it and looking online is that 
they, they're required to have any social media outlet um, that is like Facebook, you know, they would have to have a publish it like that or next door or something like that. And uh, when you re realized that this incident had occurred, what did you do? Um, once it was brought up to me, um, I met with uh, David Wozenberg and Mayor Sears on that. She brought it to me um, that this had happened. So I said, well, you know, we could always just post it because at that time, you know, it was available and we knew. Um, and I was told, well, we should, we should know, we should go and, you know, self-report to Ted Nelson. Um, so I said, okay, you know, we can, we can go do that. I don't have a problem with, you know, talking to him. I've talked to Ted several times. Um, and so in talking to him, you know, he asked me questions like, well, who brought it up? Was it a citizen? I said, no. And he says, well, who brought it up? And I was like, well, it was the mayor. So he says, so it's an internal person. I'm like, yeah. So he said, well, you know, you know, he, he basically asked me a question. He says, Chris, do you think that we have the ability and the staffing to go look for every single city's Facebook to make sure they posted this particular notice on the same day that they put in the paper? And I said, probably not. He says, it's still self-reported, so now you're going to have to change your dates. And I said, okay. So he just, so we had to then change the, the next day and instead of April 1st, we had to put the same meeting on April 15th to do that date. And was that something you were able to do? Yeah. Did this uh, cause any issues for the city? Mm, that part didn't, because we just had to, we just had the same meeting. And do you know historically if these have been posted at the same time always? It doesn't appear they were, no. Now, looking at uh, allegation number two here, it says that on or about April 17, 2024, you sent an uh, incorrect public notice to the newspaper. Are you aware of what this is referring to? Yeah, I'm aware of the situation as it happened, yes. Mm -hmm. And at this time, you've been working hard to prepare the budget, correct? Yeah, the budget was completed with no errors at that time. And uh, where does the budget get published? Um, so the public publication is um, on, well, as I know now on social media, it gets published on the designated areas in town, and it gets published in the newspaper. And on the day that you the, you had intended to publish it, April 17th, where were you at? Um, I was in Des Moines at a conference where I was taking classes for my CEUs, for, and my, basically it's my course license. <coughs> Your continued education. It's continued education, yes. And before you left for that conference, did you confirm that there weren't any errors with the budget? Yeah, there wasn't any errors because the first time we ran it, no errors existed. Because that's, if there had been an error, it would have stopped me from even being able to post the, um, the proposed, uh, proposed one. So that's why it was weird that when I went to go do this particular notice, it stopped me and I couldn't, I couldn't produce the notice. And I, at the time, I didn't have anybody around. I tried to fix it myself, but I didn't want to get in too deep and then mess up my budget. So then I said, okay, how do I figure out a workaround? Because I'm trying to be creative and protect the town. So I sent, um, you know, just a regular public notice, notice and said, you know, we'll get this published. We'll get this around town. At least that will tell that there's a public hearing. It's for the FBI budget, and this is what we're doing. So it was kind of like, if I do this, and then I can get the notice figured out, maybe I can get the notice in time, because I still knew I had two days to get to the paper, and I was still good to get to the paper. So was I in panic mode? A little bit. <laughs> um, again, I, I tried to figure it out. I just, I, you know, again, I wasn't able to figure out why the first time I did it, there was no error, and then the second time I do it, for this particular part, there's an error. And how long did it take you to, to fix the error? Um, I actually got the assistance of Connie, who came over, and we figured it out. It took us about 10 minutes to, to figure out, oh, it was a transfer error. So you know how you have, like, your, um, your transfers in, your transfers out. Okay, well, the transfers in was, or sorry, the transfers out was correct. The transfers in was not correct. So we had to, we had to basically switch those numbers, not switch them, but put the number in there. Then at that time, I was able to produce the notice, which I did then send over. Again, it would have been on time as far as it was, would have been published up on the walls. It would have been published around town on time. I went to send it in for the paper. The paper came back and said, we can't publish this till the 23rd. And I was like, why not? Because it's always been, like I said, it's a two-day time period. So I didn't understand 
okay, well, what's happening? And I tried to work with them and say, can you at least try to do it on Saturday? They said, we can't. So. And this paper, was it the Gazette? Gazette. Is this which, your first time working with them? With budgets, yes. Because I've sent in minutes before and, and all you know, kinds of things, and it took like two days. So it was just, again, it was odd to me that all of a sudden I'm, I don't, I've got a four-day window instead of a two-day window. So at that time I realized, okay, so this isn't going to work. Um, you know, and I contacted Ted and explained to him what happened. And he basically told me, he says, you're going to have to have another meeting. You're going to have to send me an extension to be able to get this, this, this uh, extended to your, your next meeting so that that way you can then have that meeting so that you can go ahead and get this completed and push the button that says we're done. They certified the budget. And were you able to, to work on that? Is that something you would have been able to fix? I don't have access to anything right now. If you had access to your stuff, is this something that would take you long to fix? It, it would not take me long to fix it. I just, it has to happen. Otherwise, the town doesn't get any money. I want to move here to allegation uh, number three. This states that on uh, April 15th of 2024, <coughs> you stated to a vendor that they will be the vendor for a project. Uh, from this notice, do you know which vendor they are talking about? I'm not sure the specific vendor, no. Uh, are you working with any specific vendors right now? I work with a lot of vendors. Um, if you had to guess, just because I'm, we I'm can't I'm assuming this is referring to the park project, which I've been working on for several months now to try to get it within the confines of the requirements that are being thrown at me that, you know, I guess I've been working with, uh, there. so ven the word term vendor can, can mean both a service provider, it can be a contract person, it can be a lot of different things. Um, in this case, it's a service provider that, that, pro that produces like um, stuff for a park. And you know, what's the name of that service provider? AB Creative. This is the one that, they're, that I'm referring to. Um, I'll just clarify for you. That is who it is referring to. Okay. I'm not, okay. We're not trying to hide the ball or anything. That's that's fine. No, it's fine. It's just some of these things are very hard to tell from the face. We just would never put a vendor's name in something like this that you you know could be a public record. Yeah, I understand. Um, so, yeah, they're just, all they are is a service provider. So they have a lot of co-ops underneath them, and they can get um, really good deals because of that. Um, and if you ask for quotes, they can go out and get those quotes. But they actually, they, they aren't the, in the end, they're not the one pro the providing the kit or anything, unless, unless it's the corn climber. The corn climber is the only one that you can get through them. But, again, I've never made any promise to the vendor that we're going, you know, that they're the only one. We're not even in the engineering stage yet. The engineer has to decide all that. The engineer has to do the open bids. The engineer has to facilitate the end of that. We don't even have an engineer yet. And so did you, do you recommend this vendor to anyone? Absolutely. They yeah. came recommended to me because of, one, the cost, and two, they can do kits that they go and they do all the sourcing. So basically when the engineer gets it, the engineer just puts, a, puts the kit up. I mean, how hard is that? Did you ever sign anything with this vendor? No. Did you ever enter any written oral agreement with them that you would no. work through them? And like you said, were you even at the stage where you could have entered into those agreements? No. And it states here that on three, that this also violated the statutory requirements of the Iowa Code. What would you guess that this is referring to? I'm having a code book in front of me. I don't know. I'm going to guess maybe entering into contracts. And is there like an open bidding process? Yeah, that's required? There's, like, there's like an open bidding process. And had you even gotten to the open bidding process? Again, we're not, we're not even, we don't have the park finished yet. Like it's, it's at the stage where we're ready to talk to an engineer, but that's it. Okay. Let's move on to uh, number four here. Can, can uh, I just ask a follow-up question? Is, is that okay? Yeah. Oh, I should have asked, I apologize. I should have asked before we had started, I meant to ask you. Are you here on behalf of the city or on behalf of I'm only at the city. Okay. I, was there a resolution for that? No, there is not. Okay. I just looked and I only seen the one front that you like. I just wanted to confirm that. No. No, that's fine. My uh, fee agreement has not been approved. Oh. Okay. Senate, but we haven't put that through council. No, that's that's good. I just wanted to make sure. Thank you. Um. So with the uh, vendor, I mean, I have an email where you wrote to Ryan 
Chandler at AB that says AB will be the vendor from Chris Shelby. Okay, but that's just, like I said, the service provider. That They're just a service provider. They can't, like, they can't actually do anything. So, again, we don't have, if I go to them and I say that council didn't approve this, then it doesn't mean anything. Because I can't enter into contract, nothing's been a contracted. They have not contacted me further for anything else to be used. Well, what does that mean to you when you're telling our vendors that, you know, our potential vendors, I guess, that they will be the vendor? I, again, it, it was more or less just a, hey, you know, guys, I really appreciate all the help that you've given me. They were able to provide me hard quotes, which I was being asked for. They've actually gone quite, a, quite out of their way to provide us a lot of information that we couldn't get anywhere else. So, again, if, if, if it's my fault for miss saying it incorrectly, I apologize for that. That wasn't the intent, and that certainly wasn't. But, again, without none of this means anything until the council approves an engineer who then has to approve the vendors, who then, with council's help, that has to be open bid, has to do all that. I understand all that. So, again, I apologize if that was something that I, you know, this is not, again, it's, <laughs> there's no manual for a clerk. <laughs> and there's, it's, it's very difficult to, to learn all of this as you go. So. Can I ask, was that, who was on that email, just because I haven't seen it? The Alvernet City Clerk and Ryan Chandler. Okay. And was that found before this was drafted through certain emails, or? Uh, before this was drafted, mm -hmm. I don't know which order it was found in. I would, yeah, I would assume it was found before this was okay. drafted. So there's an investigation prior to drafting this. Uh, I wouldn't call it an investigation. I would say there was a review of public records, as this all is public record. Mm -hmm. uh, during this part of that review of public record, did anyone talk to Mr. Shelby about any of these questions? No, this is his due process opportunity to tell his side of the story about these allegations. These are all allegations. Mm -hmm. There's been no decision about any of his discipline, if there will even be any discipline at this point. Nope, so this that. is his opportunity for due process to tell his side of the story. Yeah. That, that's happening right now. No, I appreciate it, but it's just always hard when we don't have the documents, so I'm a little in the dark on them. So we'll move forward. Uh, we have here uh, allegations four to six, all relate to uh, event on April 10th. Uh, it says that you provided inaccurate information to a local business about their licensing process. I guess, uh, Ms. Corker, can you confirm which business that is? I would lean on the mayor to get the exact name of the business correct. I believe it's Buds, B-U-D-Z-Z. -Z. Yes. yes. Um, well, they're, they're the new owners for Lefties. Oh, okay. So, Bud's is the company that's purchased Lefties. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, now, did you work with Lefties on their uh, cigarette, now Bud's, uh, on their cigarette and alcohol license? Lefties or Bud's? Uh, I guess it would be Bud's, the new owners. Um, yeah, they, they had asked me to do a... Um, Special counsel hearing um, prior to um, to try to, to basically get the process going to get their cigarette and their alcohol license. I had already started once I they submitted the documents to Elapse. Um, I started getting emails to then start the continue to start the process to get the state to approve the licensing because the state's the only one that can approve that licensing. And this is alcohol licensing? Yes, it's alcohol, so they can sell alcohol. Um, so at that point in time, that was already in process. The cigarette requires a, a permit, um, and then they turn an application that, um, you know, that basically we send off that says this is their application for this. Now, they've got two other stores. they got one in Hiawatha and one in Fort Mills. So I know it's you know it's it's more of the fact that they've they've already been approved. Obviously, if they've got those two other stores, um, but we still have to do our own. This, every city has their own permit, um, and so I pro I produced the permit information. Uh, the mayor asked me to go ahead and put it on the consent agenda to make it easy, so that that way it would save them money. They wouldn't have to pay the money to come into council. Um, and then I said, okay, that's fine. 
it is a consent agenda how you understand these things are normally, like a cigarette license is normally processed by the city? We have been doing consent agenda for renewals um, for licensing and yeah, as far as, as, since I've been here, this is how we've been doing. And did, and did the city move forward with the consent agenda? No, at the last minute I was told to take it out of the consent agenda, put it in the regular agenda, and then I was asked to produce a bunch of paperwork that I had to suddenly have to get. I was under the understanding with the process explained to me, I needed to get the permit approved by council, not the application. And did you have any concerns that Lefty was potentially being treated differently than other businesses? Yes. And why, why would that be a concern for you? I had been asked by residents whether or not the rumors were true that the new owners were Indian. Um, I had been asked if, you know, these foreigners are taking over our store. Um, you could tell the previous owners were upset by this. You know, and I told them, I was like, I'm trying to help make this transition as, as easy as possible for everybody involved. Um, I met with Gorav, and he's very nice. Um, his wife, you know, I met her, very nice. Again, they live in Robbins. Um, it, it just, I'm, if we look back and we look at Fuller's and we look at Mikey's and we look at Gibby's and we look at Lefty's, I can't imagine the things that we were told to produce, you know, during that, during that time period was the same, we didn't put them through the same, same kind of scrutiny, I guess is the way I would say. And is your job as city administrator, treasurer, clerk, to help avoid legal and financial risks for the city? Yes. Or were you a little concerned this could create some legal or financial risks? Yes. And did you voice those concerns to anyone? Yes. Uh, who? Um, you know, I did let council know during the meeting that we had that I, I was a concern that this could become looked at as discrimination if we tried to do anything that would possibly delay the licenses from being taken care of. Now, I want to move to... Uh, Late number or allegation number seven here. Uh, this allegation states that you failed to publish the April 1st, 2024 special meeting minutes in the newspaper. Can you just talk about what happened there? Yeah. Um, so the April 1st meeting was supposed to be the first meeting of a set of meetings that's supposed to happen in chronological order in order to get the budget out on time. This is something new the state has done. We have a meeting in the beginning, and now that is is a you know basically. A public open hearing that we just talk about the FY25 budget and it's open to the public. The second part of that is then to set the next meeting date. So before that, um, because of the issue with the Facebook, the, the notice not going to Facebook, basically, and I remember that night because Caitlin Clark was playing and everybody wanted to get out of here and no one was here as far as the public concerned. So um, basically, once we had that meeting, I, I said, okay, so now we're moving this to the 15th, the exact same process, the exact same meeting as we moved to the 15th. Honestly, with everything that was going on, and this is my, you know, I, I admit this in, in, in hindsight, yeah, I didn't get the minutes out in time because I was concerned about the next meeting minutes, and I was concerned about how I'm going to get this budget out on time now because we've we've delayed, we've started to cause a delay. I'm a person that works a month in advance, I'm a person that tries to have some sort of a schedule. My days can be interrupted completely with the regulator lights, for example, the, the, you know, the water tower or something like that. So in this case, um, you know, it, it does appear that I, I did not get the, the special meeting minutes, but it was a special council meeting and you know, I, again, I, I just... Is this something you could resolve? I could publish the minutes. How long would that take you? Uh, a few minutes. You know, just to republish under the paper. No pun intended. I know. <laughs> That's good. Uh, let's move then to allegation number eight here. It says, on or about April 7th, 2024, you permitted a posting on the community sign violation of the community sign policy. Uh, who created the community sign policy? And what did you post on the uh, community sign that caused this issue? Uh, Townwide garage sale. 
mandates. And does the sign policy state that the sign is for promoting town events? The, the top part says is, you know, events have, you know, have special events in town. And were there any uh, for-profit businesses who requested that this sign be placed? Uh, no, it was just residents. And you're, so you're just trying to notify the town about the uh, garage sale date. Right. And I thought, and there's nothing in the policy that says that the city administrator can't publish something that is happening around the town. Now, looking at these kind of claims as a whole, it does appear <coughs> that your relationship with the mayor is a little strained. Has, has this always been the case? No. Do you feel like there was a change in your relationship with the mayor at some point? I think it probably started with the big winter storm that we had. <laughs> Are you referring to the, uh, it would be the January storm that's yeah. in the middle of January this year? Yeah. And what do you mean by there are some issues there? Um, I had concerns for the, the staff and myself, honestly, about safety and how often we could go out and plow, um, trying to to control the situation with one and a half people. <laughs> and I still have my roles to do. I still have my, my treasury role. I still have my administrative role. I still have all these things to take care of. I'm not supposed to be the full-time public works guy. I'm supposed to be there to help. And unfortunately, that situation was uncontrolled. It was, I mean, it was noted that it was, it was unusual and, and not happening in a long time as far as being able to control it. Even with big cities like that have 10 crews like Marion, they were having problems. So I can imagine we've got us trying to, to delegate this. I, I felt like I did the best I can, I could, but at one point she said that, you know, I feel like I have to step in. And it wasn't I, I'm asking to step in or how can I help? It was just I feel I have to step in. And, you know, hearing things like, I hate to tell you this, but you got to go out and plow, and I've already plowed a bunch, and now there's so much snow on the ground. I, I have a lifted four-wheel drive Jeep, and I couldn't even get it down the road. I ended up getting stuck um, in the ditch and had to be pulled out by a friend of mine to get that out. I was then able to come back into town, plow for a little bit longer, but then I had to go, I mean, I had to get some sleep, so I went back, slept for about three hours, and then I had to get back up and plow again. And were you concerned at all about maybe the safety of your maintenance employee or anyone else? Yeah, I am. I mean, I'm always, I'm always concerned about the safety of my employees. I want to help them out. I don't want to be sitting here. You know, this guy, I think it was like a, he was here for a week or two before we started. I mean, he got this. So he had, this is, was his first experience dealing with city streets. And it's kind of a trial by fire at that point, you know. Um, I was still learning you know, a lot, of the, a lot of the nuances, and that was just not the storm to learn on. That was the worst storm to learn on. Did you raise any of these safety concerns with the mayor? I did. Uh, what was her response? We got to get it done. We got to get it plowed. And do you feel like the, the conflict here changed your relationship with her a little? I feel like there, it started to basically, she was thinking that I was constantly challenging her. Um, I do feel that she thought I was lying to her about the machines not starting one day, and that's why we didn't plow. But they didn't start, and she didn't believe me that, they, that we put gas in it that, you know, from lefties and we, you know, that's treated gas. Mac did all of that prior to us, this storm. You know, like, you know, so it was just kind of, I just started to feel like there was suddenly this, this, you know, more and more oversight on something that, I mean, I had no idea how much experience she had with this. So, again, because it wasn't a normal storm. Um, yeah, so that was that. That I think is part of the turning point. Yeah. And were there any other items that were occurring in the city that you were concerned about around this time? I just, I was starting to become a little more micromanaged. Um, I was trying to, I didn't. I was trying to get enough time to work with my staff, and I just felt like I wasn't getting enough time to work with my staff. Like things were, for every two things we got done, we got ten things thrown at us. And it, I kept saying, stop, can you just stop? And it just wasn't happening. We just, and then, you know, so I just, I, tr I tried to plow through it as much as I could. Um, you know, um, there was certain items that I just, I felt council needed to start on, to know because I felt like we were going into meetings and they were being presented a resolution or they were being presented 
something that has not even, in, because I haven't seen the emails, I haven't seen the information on it, that they've been talking about it, so I don't really know. And then, you know, all of a sudden... think of a specific example of that? Well, like the, the 1800 for the appraisal um, fee that we did for vacating the, the alleyways, I mean, that was never approved. I just got told to do this. Um, you know, we've been dealing with some minimum infractions that I was told to not involve counsel. You know, um, you know, as far as, well, should we try to at least set a limit of what we're going to do or how we're moving forward or, I mean, the one with Keith is, is ongoing. Um, there was a discussion that she had with Keith um, when she asked me to produce a list of the things that he needed to get into compliance. And then she called Keith, which I understand, I totally get it. The fact that he was showing up her house was not good, but I was sitting there going to, you know, this was brought up to her later, but, you know, why aren't you calling a sheriff? <laughs> and the thing is, is that we had already had a meeting in November that said, Keith, you have to fix these things. So I kind of felt like, okay, now she's going and telling him we have a compromise here. And, like, we can't compromise. They said everything. Like, that was... Everything has to be picked up. Um, you know, yeah. And on other issues, were you concerned at all with the way that ordinances were being handled? Um, again, this is just, you know, this is just something that I had mentioned because it had been brought to me to, to an, by an attorney. Um, Which attorney? Matthew, Matthew Hayek. And then it also been brought up at a convention that I was at where it, it is not a good practice and it is highly, strongly recommended not to collapse ordinances into one ordinance. And I just basically said, hey, by the way, we probably shouldn't do this. When you say one ordinance, you mean one reading? One reading, instead yeah, of three. one reading instead of three. So again, these are just things, they're just discussions, but I just felt like, I feel like I'm not being heard. So what I did was I put it into my city admin report because I just, I felt like council should know. I'm, I'm not trying to call anybody out. I'm just saying I think council should be aware of what I'm seeing and say, hey, you know, maybe we need to slow this down a little bit and start having these discussions before we are just, you know, signing resolutions to put stop signs up or, you know, putting, I mean, we haven't even heard from Will Dival yet, but yet we're, we're purchasing, you know, these signs, these light signs at a cost of like 13000 and the school's not paying for any of it. Again, these are just concerns. I'm just, you know, one person. Whether or not she follows them or whether or not council follows them, that's their decisions. You just wanted to make sure it's being brought up. That everybody is aware of what is going on, yes. And you said you put this in an administrative report in, you believe it was March. It's hard for us to know because we can't go back and get it right this time. But Yeah, I believe it was in March. Mm -hmm. And were you, again, trying to protect the city from what you felt was potential legal and financial risk? Yes. And did you feel like this fell within your duties as yes. city administrator, treasurer? Yes. Uh, after you put this, these issues in the administrative report, do you feel like your uh, relationship with the mayor changed further? Yeah, I mean, all of a sudden I was, for lack of a better word, and we did have a meeting about it, but I just felt like we used to talk. We used, we used to pick up the phone, we used to talk to you, so she would stop in here and we would talk. We're not doing that anymore. It's volleys of emails, It's which she's claiming is, is, is documentation, but it's it's so many emails that it's becoming disruptive to my day. I can't, I can't get anything done because I'm, and of course, I'm sitting there on the end typing up an email back, trying to dot my I's and cross my T's and make sure that I'm not saying that anything that could be misconstrued like Fender, um, you know, anything like that. It's, it's, it's time consuming. And when I looked at the previous months and I only got 10 a month and now all of a sudden I'm getting, you know, 30 plus emails. I'm like, okay. And I, I did when we had our talk, I was with Trump and Bozenberg that came in and we sat down and we talked about how we can try to rectify this. You know, it was said, well, after two emails, if we're not on the same page, let's make a phone call. And that didn't really happen. <laughs> and did all these issues that are done in the notice of due process, I mean, these all came after you had made uh, this report to the city council, correct? 
it, it seemed like it intensified, yes. And do you believe that, are, are you willing to work on your relationship with the mayor, work on uh, performing your job? Do you want to be successful in this position? I love this job. I love this job. I, I did this job by myself for how many months and no problems. I, all I want to do is my job. I, I don't want to be constantly overlooked as far as where I'm at. If you've got a question, I've got all the council members are coming forward, they got a question, you know, what's going on? And I just sit there and I tell them, this is what's going on. All you got to do is ask. I'm not hiding anything. I don't, I want to get, be able to get this grants. I've got, we've got great, this town's booming. You know, we got a lot of great projects that are about to happen, and I can't make any of them happen right now because we're spending all this time on policies and, you know, stuff like this, you know, and, and I'm just like, I can't, I, I can't do my job. I feel paralyzed to be able to do my job correctly, and that's frustrating. And I know we've, we've talked about the disputes here and some of the issues and some of the tension that you obviously, you and the mayor both have. Would you be willing to move past that to work with her and to do what it takes to try to repair that relationship? if you're given the opportunity and both sides were working towards it? As long as we come up with a system that makes it so that I feel like I can plan my days, I can plan my own priorities, I can get, you know, things done. I don't want to be, you know, I really, you know, I do already do an administrative report. I don't know why I'm also filling out a weekly report of everything that's going on. You know, that to me seems a bit excessive. I, I don't need to be like, I, I, you know, the, the, EK, the ECOG grant, that is something that I have been working on for a while to get this past $100,000 grant so that we can build a generator. I don't need the mayor going over my head to talk to a director that, that I'm not even working with. I'm working with someone she assigned me, and I have very clear cut instructions with that ECOG grant. They, they don't want to deviate from that. So I don't understand why the mayor is just suddenly going over my head to do that. And the, the, the same is for the, um, you know, working with the nuisance violations. I'm working with Lynn County. It's a good relationship. You know, and I get that she wants to understand more. And I'm happy to, you know, Veronica was happy to basically, you know, start including and if she really needs that. But again, the mayor's role, is, is this really part of what the mayor is supposed to be doing? You know, it's, it's not, she's not here full time. I am. And if you were to remain on administrative leave or to be terminated, are there certain things that the city needs to get done in the immediate future that wouldn't suffer as a result? All the minutes are April at this point. Um, somebody has to certify the budget to get the, the um, note to produce. Ted has already told me I'm the only one that has access to that right now. So I, I would have to produce that. Otherwise, you guys get no funding. That's, that's how fast it happens. Um, I also have to send an extension to him. I have to get that done. Um, the park project would be dead. Um, we'd have to have somebody follow up with ECOG. Um, we'd have to have somebody go to court for the municipal infractions that are taking place right now that I'm fully embraced into. Um, you'd have to do the budget amendment, which at this point, I'm hoping I don't have to do one because, wow. <laughs> um, I'd be you're ready to learn the systems. I'm already prepared for a lot of this, but. Um, again, I haven't had time to work on it, so it's like, you know, to finish it up. Um, uh, and you're ready to prepare to work on all these items, and you would like to get back to them. I right? would love to get back to them because it's keeping me up at night right now, that they're not getting done. That's all I have. That's our presentation. Thank you all for your time today. I just have a couple clarifying questions, and the council might have clarifying questions, too. Uh, Following up on what you just said, so are you saying that if the council would keep you on leave or not return you to your position for whatever reason, however that looked, that they would lose all of their funding? Is that what you're saying? If we don't get the budget certified and done in the time extension that we asked for, then what happens is they don't they don't get those funds. Am I right, Connie? Yes. The state, the, the county wouldn't, or there would be no budget, no funding coming to the city.
beginning, I think you talked about one of your duties is, has to do with um, water and water treatment. Mm -hmm. Are you um, certified to do any of the water treatment? We have an affidavit operator that handles the reports, monitors all the things we do, but we still have to do the testing every day, and we are allowed to do check the lagoons, check the levels, do the you know help with the discharge. We he does all the the bigger testing. Uh -huh. So he comes in and he gets like, um, we have certain requirements when we do the lagoon for, for testing three days prior. So he goes and gets that sample and he has to take that down to the labs. Um, fortunately, Central City has got kind of a 2080 with us. And so, um, you know, we basically are helping, they're helping us out in that matter as far as getting those samples to Waterloo so our guys don't have to take them there. When you were talking about the Gazette notice and that you had sent it to them and then they had a four-day waiting period that you weren't familiar with, did you send that after business hours? Um, it was right around 3 o'clock or it was 3 or 4 o'clock that I think that we sent it. To the Gazette? I, I don't have the... It, it says here that it was after business hours and I have the email that it was after 5 o'clock. Was it after business hours on the 17th or the 18th? I'll pull up the email. Thank you. I think if it was the 18th, that would still be four days. Because that would have been Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Monday. It had to be there by Saturday, though. Okay. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing. And oh, yeah, because they needed four days. Right, and again, and I... thought it was two. Honestly, I'm... Three. Yeah, I was at the conference, so I'm not... Business hours for me at the conference, it starts when the, con the conference starts. So whenever it ended, mm -hmm. yeah, it ends when it ends. So when I got out of class... I, I tried to get it, you know, that's when we tried to fix this and get it sent out. I honestly wasn't, I don't know what time, I don't, I don't remember what time it was. Sorry, Holly. No, that's okay. I have, um, I have 512 on the 18th. Okay. I'm sorry, I didn't have, I didn't have the opportunity to look at that. Okay. And then, with the snow plowing, what was the actual safety concern that you reported? The safety concern that I said was, we, we've we got it, one, there was, um, there was, there was too much, um, what's it called, flying snow? Yeah, it, the, the, the deterioration of blizzard conditions okay. was one, and then the second one was, there was, there was too much snow on the ground, like we were having issues getting trucks through, we couldn't get the trucks started one day, and then also there was the, we'd already worked a number of hours, and so we had to sleep. Like basically, we've got to get rest. We've got to get refreshed. Then we can try to go back out. It. I understand that there was a there was a decision to like we should stagger that. Um, it's hard to stagger with just two people. <laughs> yeah, because you're still going to get snow accumulation during that time. Again, it was a very unusual storm. Storm. It was very unprecedented. Right. We should get a number of hours. But what do you mean by? It? I, I don't like to work more over 10. I mean, I was falling asleep in the skid loader the one day, and that's when I, just, I pulled myself off, because I said I can't, I can't keep driving a skid loader from falling asleep. But, and when you did that, no one told you you had to keep working or anything like that when you pulled over? We were under the, 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 under the we were told blades need to be on the ground. The expectation is blades need to be on the ground. We need to keep cleaning up. So after you pulled over, someone told you, nope. Can't do that no, I made that decision as myself okay. that I need I need to stop. I recognized I was falling asleep in the skid loader. I need to stop because I didn't want to injure myself or anything anything around me. Okay. I don't think I have any other questions. Does the council have any other questions? When did you return from the conference on the 8th? Friday. So the next day, mm -hmm. the 19th. Yeah, because we ended at 12, I think. On Friday. Friday. What day was it sent? So Thursday, it would have been sent. And you came back from the conference on when? Friday. So you were aware when you sent the email? I, I knew that we had the notice. 
I was trying to get you pulled at the conference then when you sent the mm -hmm. or were you back here after? after no, I, I sent the email. So during the conference, you sent the email. Yeah. Okay. And then I knew once I had the notice, if I got back on Friday, I could get it up in the locations in time okay. to be able to qualify for the, the correct amount of time for you know post it. So how long did this conference last that day? Did it start when it was over? Which day? The day you sent the email. So Wednesday to Friday. On Thursday what it oh I think we were done about five o'clock because Chris come and got me right as soon as we were done. Yeah. Do you know what time it started on Thursday? Eight eight. We had to be there at eight for the first class. Mm -hmm. Eight, yeah. Like, well, we had the first timers uh, yeah. meet, and then we started class at nine, mm -hmm. and then we go. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Anything else that you guys would like? No. Thank you so much for your time. Okay. Anything else? From Chris, Annie, or did from you want to say anything? <laughs> Um, I guess the one thing I want to point out is Chris has been doing this job for a year and a half. In my opinion, he's doing very well. With all the hats we wear, this job takes three to five years to learn. And he made an attempt to, tr to he makes an attempt every day to do this stuff by himself without calling me. I'm a mentor, and I'm trying to do this same job. And I mentor two other cities. I am busy. I'm very busy. So, I, I think... Chris has done an excellent job. He's doing his best. There isn't anything that happened that can't be rectified easily by um, reposting, filing an extension, publishing minutes. I mean, we are not perfect. We are human. We are going to make mistakes. We are. Um, and I'll be the first to tell you that. I've made mistakes, but all you can do is correct them and move on from there. That's, that's all you can do. So... So if there's nothing else, we'll move on to the next, can I see your agenda real quick? We'll move on to the next agenda, thank you very much, item, um, which would be a closed session pursuant to Iowa Code Section 21.51C. So I think the mayor could entertain a motion from any council member uh, to go into closed session, as it states here, pursuant to Iowa Code Section 21.51C. I would take a motion to enter into closed session pursuant to Iowa Code Section 21.51C. So moved by Myers. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Suka. Any further discussion? Um, I will just give you a legal opinion for the minutes that I have reviewed the subject matter of the closed session, and it would be appropriate to go into closed session under Iowa Code Section 21.51C. And would you explain? We heard about closed sessions. We've never participated in one. Would you give us more details? about what we're about to do. Yes, so you will um, go into closed session so that you are able to receive attorney-client privilege <coughs> advice and discuss strategy on a matter where litigation is imminent uh, or uh, actually occurring and its disclosure would be likely to prejudice the city's position uh, if you were to have that in open session. So in this particular type of uh, closed session, really what you're trying to protect is your attorney-client privilege. Discussion? And during the closed session, is it just us, or is it? It's whoever Alex? the council decide, desires. So the council gets to choose who's in the closed session. The only requirement under uh, sub C is that you have to have legal counsel with you. Okay. Is it just the council then? That's it. That's in it. For attorney client, yes, I believe that's how you have to protect that. Correct. Yes. You could ask them to stay if you would like. Um, that would waive our privilege, so I would right. advise not. But if you have questions, we could pull them in for that. Okay. Any other questions? All right. I need a roll call for entering the closed session. Uh, Councilor Trump. Aye. Councilor Bosenberg. Councilor Sukup? Aye. 
Councilor West? Aye. Councilor Myers? Aye. Motion passes. Okay. Do I list the time now or do we wait for? Yep. So it, it is 7.55. So we're going to go into closed session. So while we're in closed session, we'll turn the video off. We don't have another room to go to that I'm aware of. So we would just ask that you step out and we'll come grab you guys. Would you like us to wait in case? If you want to wait, you can. It's totally up to you. There is a possible action item listed afterwards. Yeah, we can, we can wait around then for that. Okay. Thank you so much. We'll just go outside and not stare in the windows creepily, I promise. <laughs> okay. Well, I might. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's because you're heading yeah, for it. <laughs> session. Next item on the agenda, a possible action item regarding the evaluation of the professional competency of an individual whose appointment, hiring, performance, or discharge is being considered. So we do have colleagues to go over the resolution. Uh, yes, if you'd like to. Okay. What do you mean if we'd like to? So uh, the council has a resolution in front of them. Uh, you can just go through your normal process of how you would normally go through a resolution if you would normally, would you normally read those off? Um, sometimes. Depends on. I can read it. All right. Council has resolution 2024-10, resolution removing the city administrator, city clerk, pursuant to Iowa Code section 372.15, whereas the city council approved the hiring of Chris Shelby as the city administrator, city clerk, whereas pursuant to Iowa Code section 372.15, the City Council resolves to remove Chris Shelby from the position of City Administrator, City Clerk, effective April 23rd, 2024. Therefore, it be resolved by the City Council for the City of Elvernet, Iowa, that Chris Shelby shall be removed from the position of City Administrator, City Clerk, effective April 23rd, 2024. Issues a written order for Chris Shelby's removal, pursuant to Iowa Code Section 372.15, and directs the Mayor to file the written order for Chris Shelby's removal with the City Clerk's office. That is the resolution you have in front of you. I move to approve resolution 2024-10. Moved by Myers. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Suka. Any further discussion? Hearing right, none, did we decide roll call on this? Probably. Yes, roll call. Okay. Uh, Councilor Trum? Aye. Councilor Bosenberg? Aye. Councilor Suka? Aye. Councilor West? Aye. Councilor Myers? Aye. Motion carries. All right. And with that, we have reached the end of our agenda. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Still moved. Moved by Myers. I have a second. Second. Second by West. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed nay. The motion carries. We are adjourned at 9.31 p.m. <laughs>